I'm making this video so if you missed anything in class today, uh, because I, I ran out of time because of all the extra credit we were keeping track of, you're going to need to see this stuff. So I'm making this video for you. First thing for you to look at is right here, and that is for the extra credit assignment, it's actually number two. In periods one and two, I had it as number three. So that has been fixed, and now when you go to look for the extra credit assignment in the homework section of today's homework page, you will understand that it's number two, and it's explained there for you. Next, something for you to take notes on, and that is that this is an example of the homework that you were supposed to do for today. It was on page 357, and it was question number two. That's what I'm, I'm uh, referring to right now, this guy right up here. And what I wanted you to understand from here is that there's a lot of mole ratios, and most of you are not understanding yet how important the mole ratios are or what they have. So you'll want to write down in your journal right here that if you have three substances in an equation, and I will make little stars next to these right now, okay, that is one substance, this is the second substance, and this is a third substance. So when you have three substances, which are just uh, representative particles, we abbreviated those as RPs, when you have three of those, you're always going to have six mole ratios. And I recommend that as you're seeing right here in this example, you do the arrows first, and then you'll get your number of mole ratios correct. Because the four aluminum, which you'll see over here, four aluminum, and three oxygen. You'll notice that this arrow goes back and forth between those two. Draw your arrows. Make sure you have an arrow from everything to everything. So in that particular equation, you want arrows from aluminum to oxygen. And you also want this arrow from uh, oxygen. Uh, Oh, aluminum to oxygen. Not that one. No, 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 no. Uh, you want aluminum to oxygen and hold on. Okay, you want the aluminum to the oxygen, not to the aluminum oxide first. I'm just dealing with this first little ratio. Four aluminums to three oxygens gives you a mole ratio of four to three. When we go the other way, we're going to say that we have three oxygens to four aluminums. And then when we deal with this ratio right here, okay, that I'm going down to this little double arrow, we're doing oxygens to aluminum oxide. And that goes both ways. So we have a ratio of three oxygens to two aluminum oxides. We also have a ratio of two aluminum oxides to three oxygens. And that what that all means is that one mole ratio, for instance, uh, this guy right here, okay, we have four moles of aluminum over two moles of oxygen. And we have the same ratio over here that's upside down. And that has three moles of oxygen to four moles of aluminum. That's why those arrows are double. So, Aluminum has to go to oxygen, and aluminum has to go to aluminum oxide, and then oxygen has to go to aluminum, and oxygen has to go to aluminum oxide, and then aluminum oxide has to go to both aluminum uh, itself, the aluminum, uh, the first substance in the equation, as well as to the oxygen. And that's how you come up with six mole ratios. Now the second one has four substances, and for the very same reason I was just describing, four substances you have 12 mole ratios. And I would recommend that you put that right into your journal, and that would help you a lot. When you get down to number three here, you're going to see that 
uh, the zinc oxide <coughs> plus two hydrochloric acids or hydrogen chlorides if it's not in water are going to give you zinc chloride and water and so that one has how many substances? One, two, three, four. Four substances. And so that will have, now let's think for a moment, how many will it have? If you've been listening, you'll be able to tell me. Well, I hope you got it right. It's going to be six, not six, twelve mole ratios. It's just like number 2B above. It has four substances. It'll have 12 mole ratios. And you see them all written out here very, very nicely. So I hope that helps for that part of today's stuff. Okay, I'm starting fresh with the given and find as an example of what we were supposed to do in the do now. So if you go to the do now page, you'll see this. And the do now was changing 3.5 moles of hydrogen, which I'm underlining right now. You're going to change 3.5 moles of hydrogen into how many grams of water? Okay. Now, let's look back at this problem. It's the same thing. Okay, we're given 1.25 moles of C2H4, which is called ethane. And for ethane, C2H4 over 1. And notice that ethane here in the balanced equation has no coefficients. So there's no coefficients uh, in front of the ethane. Now, we take that and we multiply it by, and let's, we're supposed to get grams of CO2, but you can't get grams of CO2 unless you have a balanced equation and you can get a mole ratio. So, in our next fraction, as you might suspect, C2H4 has to be on the bottom. Always write that first. And then let's identify our mole ratio. The mole ratio that we're talking about now is we're trying to get the CO2. So, we look at the CH4, which is our given, and we look at the CO2, which is what we're supposed to find. And we look at that mole ratio. And that mole ratio is what we're going to have to use next. So, look over here. The number with C2H4, or ethane, is 1. It's an implied 1. And here, with the CO2, the coefficient is a 2, and that's CO2. And that is moles, by the way. I should have put that in. And this is moles. It goes right up there. And this goes right in here. So, our next job, since we now have moles of CO2, because this is also moles, and this is one mole. Okay, so one mole of ethane. We're going to cross out moles of ethane, both the coefficients and the units of measure, and the substance. So we're sitting right here with moles of carbon dioxide. Now, the next thing we have to do is change grams to moles. And grams to moles is done the way we always have done it since we started doing grams to moles. So, we're trying to figure out the molar mass of carbon dioxide. In carbon dioxide, you have one carbon, and so that's a total of 12 grams. And that's the molar mass of carbon, the mass of one mole. And then you have two oxygens. Each oxygen is 16, and there's two of them. So, that gives us a total of 32. Let's fix that. That gives a total of 32 grams, and when we add that up, we have a total of 44 grams of CO2 is equal to one mole. So we are going to use that now to do our final conversion into grams. So we have 44 grams. Oh, let's do the bottom first. Uh, the bottom part here should be what? Yes. It's one mole of 
CO2. And from over here, we know that one mole of CO2 is going to be 44 grams of CO2. And when we get our answer here, we're going to have... Okay, when I start to do the calculation, I want to draw your attention to something. This was supposed to be the given. Um, I had had this listed as one mole of ethane. It is not. It's 1.25 moles of ethane because that's what was given. So if I go back now, this is a straight multiply all the way across the top. So it's 1.25 for the given amount. This next guy was our mole ratio of CO2 to, to uh, ethane. Okay. And then the next thing you have is the molar mass. And when you multiply them all the way across the top, you get 110 grams of CO2. Now, let's check this out. You see the given and the find up at top. You see the balanced equation in the middle with all of its mole ratios. And the only one that we wound up using was this guy right here. Okay, I just circled it in red. That's the only one of those mole ratios that you need to use here. And another thing that I wanted to point out, and I took a little break and I drew something for you that should look very familiar. We go grams to moles to representative particles, that green at the bottom of the white area there. And let's draw a little arrow to it. That's something that we've been using in Chapter 11, going grams to moles of a single substance. What happens with stoichiometry is that we add a step that you weren't using before. And that step was the mole ratio from the balanced equation. In this particular case, it was the mole ratio uh, from the balanced equation that relates the, you know, let's do this black, that relates the CO2 to the ethane. And that mole ratio was used to convert, and let's look at where we used it. Okay, here it is, right here. This little guy, okay, that's our mole ratio. I was just talking about below. We're using that mole ratio now. Let's uh, separate these guys out because this is kind of a little different. And that got us to moles of CO2. This guy right here. Now, once we have moles of CO2, we go to grams of CO2, and that's what was done with the molar mass, which you see right here. Okay? So, let's trace it, and let's see exactly what this does, and we'll, we'll get a better idea of how to use these two little... Um, diagram. Now I moved the screen up and to avoid getting your eyes confused I uh, made everything else kind of disappear. And you can see here I started a little blue line and I'm starting it again. And you can see we did the grams of ethane to moles of ethane and instead of going over to representative particles which are over here we don't want that. So what we did is we made a right turn, okay, and we came down here to moles of CO2 using this guy, that mole ratio, and that mole ratio is not the right numbers at this point in time. Let's put those numbers in as well, and the numbers of uh, CO2 was 2 and ethane was 1, so let's go ahead and put that two coefficient in there, and that was the ratio that we used. And then we used the molar mass 
to take us here to our final goal. Instead of going off to representative particles, which I call a wild goose shape. I hope this helps. That's how you solve the problem. And this is how you should be able to do the do now problem, which if you haven't done it, why don't you take a minute and copy this down and try that on your own. And we'll see you later. I hope this helps a lot. Bye-bye.